G'day guys, welcome back again. Today we have got a 2010 Subaru Impreza with a EJ204 2 litre engine. It's come in for a check engine light on, traction control, cruise light, but as you know, with these Subarus that when the engine light comes on, the cruise light usually comes on also. So we're gonna connect up the uh, launch pad and let's check for codes and see what we have to deal with. Okay, so we are connected up and we have got P0037. Heated oxygen sensor, heated control circuit low, bank one sensor two. Obviously these, both of these banks tee into one pipe, so we've only got one sensor one and one sensor two. So we're gonna be looking at the post catalytic converter sensor and um, we'll make a little bit of a plan of attack, but usually when we see a heated control circuit low code, we usually think short to ground or high resistance. The first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna connect up a either a multimeter or maybe my new u scope if we're lucky and um, we're just going to plug into the actual plug we're going to back probe the two heater wire circuits and see if we've got battery voltage uh, it saves us unplugging anything and doing anything unnecessary in case there's a minor fault with the wiring or anything like that we don't want to disturb anything let's do the easy test first so let's get the scope out there and have a look guys we are here this is the post cat sensor wiring that goes down to the exhaust down there. Bit of a pain in the ass, but once it's in the air, it should be all right. Anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna test this connector here. So like I said, we're gonna hook up a scope. We're gonna plug into the two heater wires and find out whether we've got battery voltage and a good ground there. Now, in order to test these, uh, usually the 12 volt power feed for the heater circuit comes from a fuse or a relay. It may or may not have 12 volts when the key's off. So we're gonna do all these tests with the engine running because even the PCM ground may not ground until the car's running. So some cars may ground with the key on, but we're gonna do everything running to make sure. We're gonna plug into these, the two same colored wires. It's pretty universal. We're gonna go for the heater circuit and the same on the front, which is a wideband sensor both of the black wires are the heater circuit so we could get the wiring diagram and see where the 12 volts come from or you know when the engine grounds the actual circuit or you know what two wires are a heater circuit but we don't really need it but if you're not sure then always consult the wiring diagram first so let's look up a scope to these two wires let's start the car up and see what we get alrighty we are plugged in Power and Earth on our brand new U-Scope. Let's turn it on and set it up. So we're currently on 14 volts at the top. We know that uh, alternator charging rate is going to be around that or just higher. So let's just raise it up a little bit. Let's go over to the voltage and go up to the next level. Um, I think I set that trigger. Let's go set that trigger at around 14 volts so that way if it does get there, we know. And uh, let's go start the car up and see what happens. So, as you can see, battery voltage there, straight to our heater resistor circuit. But you'll find that after a small amount of time it will drop straight to ground because it realizes that there is low current and it will just stop applying power to the actual heater circuit and it just happened there so we know we've got a good power we know we've got a good controlled ground what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect that sensor and we are going to check the resistance of the heater element itself So we are unplugged now. We are checking the resistance of the heater element just with our multimeter. I don't know if you can see that, but that is 39 kilo ohms. So ridiculously high. We know that these should be somewhere on average roughly around the 5 ohm mark. And uh, that's off the charts. So that's going to be causing extremely, extremely low current, which is why we are getting a low circuit code. So we're going to order a new sensor in and we're going to do the same test and see what we get with an ohms reading. Brand new sensor has arrived. We have back probed on it. I could poke these in the front. They're pretty flat terminals and they're flat ends on, on the actual 
probes themselves, but um, we won't. We'll just back probe so we don't have to worry about it. Check it out. Hovering around the five, 25, five and a half ohms mark. So we know that's definitely the cause. What I might do just to prove it to you and show you what the computer is reading current wise, I'm, I'm gonna plug that one back in. And I'm gonna get the data pit for it. And we'll see if we can get a current reading on the data pit and then replace the sensor. And then see what the current reading is after that to prove we definitely have a fix. So as you can see here, we do have the data pit for it, rear O2 heater current and because that resistance is so ridiculously high, we've got absolutely no current flow at all. So let's put the new sensor on and do the same test and let's see what we get. All right guys, the new oxygen sensor is in. Not that bad, obviously that shield down, but the sensor is right here. Hopefully you can see that, it's right there. So we're gonna go over to the cab, we'll turn it on. Let's get the launch pad. Let's start it up. Obviously our engine lights are still on, we haven't cleared them yet, but let's just see if we can get a current reading. So let's go okay. Look at that. Now we have a decent heater current there of 1.1 amps. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get out of this, I'm gonna clear the codes and then come back to you. Here we have it guys. All the lights are off, codes are cleared. We're back on the screen. One amp of current. Looks pretty good at the moment. So, let's just leave it running for a while, make sure we don't drop anything out. Make sure we've still got our power and ground over there. And obviously, as you know before, we had power and ground and after a certain amount of time, it cut out. So let's jump up over there. We're gonna leave it running. So that way it's, it's been a couple of minutes before we pull up the U-scope. And let's see if we still have a constant power and a constant ground there. So we're back connected up. Car's been running for a few minutes now. As you can see, we still have about 14 volts there. So our, our, um, our cursor's up at about the 14 volt mark and Probably can't see that, that's not great. But anyway, our cursor's on the 14 volt mark and it's still there, it's been running for ages. So we know that there is no issue going forward. Let's go back inside the car. And we'll have a look at the data pit again, just to make sure we still got good current and we still do, as you can see there. No lights are back on, so safe to say, this car is definitely fixed. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, I just did the long way about all of this, diagnose this, a heater resistor with high resistance. You could have just come out here, unplug the plug, check the resistance straight away and you would have diagnosed it 100%. Seeing kilo ohms, you know that it needs to be replaced. But that's not the point, right? Because if you do have a oxygen sensor with high resistance for the heater element, what are you gonna do? So you can't say that you're not gonna check the power on the ground to it, because how do you know that you still got a good power and still got a good ground? If you've got one of the issues, then obviously it could be a compounded effect. You don't want to go replace an oxygen sensor, ring the customer, sell them a sensor and say it's going to fix the issue and you plug it back in and realise you've got a bad power or a bad ground. So due diligence, you still need to check the power on the ground anyway. And you might say, well, you don't need a scope. Well, absolutely you don't need a scope. My U-scope hooked up in about exactly the same time as it would for me to get the multimeter and connect the multimeter up. So this is my multimeter. Now I use this for everything voltage wise instead of a multimeter. And there is a little reason why. The reason why is, now this front sensor, pulse width modulated to the heater element. This back sensor isn't. So yes, we see our 12 volts, we see our ground. Now, if we connect our scope to this one, have a guess what we're gonna see. In fact, I'll show you. Don't mind me, just probing around here. I may get these around the wrong way. There you go, you can see it already. Let me get this in. Now, you can see that, let me just change the scale a little bit. There you go. Pulse width modulated. Now, we know that because we've got our U-scope hooked up. But what do we see if we get a multimeter? Let me go grab the multimeter and I'll show you. 
picked it up on both. I've just got the probes hooked up to the back of the banana plugs. This is what the scope sees. This is what the multimeter sees. As you can see, it's around the hovering around the three to two volt mark, and what you're seeing is an average of the duty cycle. So whatever the duty cycle is of this, how much on time compared to off time, you're gonna get the average on the multimeter. So if you hook this up, what are you gonna think? Are you gonna think that you have a bad power or have a bad ground? Or are you gonna look at that and know you have a pulse with modulated signal? So I don't know if that makes sense to you, but that is why I use the U-scope for everything voltage wise now. Uh, I wasn't going to get one because I've got a few other scopes, but to be honest with you, it costs almost next to nothing for what a scope usually costs. Yes, it's only one channel. Yes, you've got to get it shipped here from AES Wave in America, but honestly, such a great tool. It's just as fast as getting the multimeter out. Problem is solved. We have nutted out this P0037, so it's just all about a, a methodical process, knowing how the system works testing everything, make sure you make the right call and making the customer happy. So hopefully that made some sense to you guys. Uh, appreciate you watching and if you haven't subscribed, please do. Thank you once again.